Hi, it's Carly McAvoy. We've been working with GeoGebra to find out areas under a standard normal or bell-shaped curve. Um, and now we're going to look at normal distributions that are not necessarily standard, which means the mean does not equal zero or the standard deviation doesn't equal one or both. Um, and But one of the things we can do is convert from a non-standard z-score to a standard z-score. And then if we have two different things that we're comparing, we can decide which one has the is more unusual. And more unusual means it's further away from the mean. So there's a very st straightforward formula here. We have mu, which is our given mean, and then we have our given value, and then we have a standard deviation. So this says the average resting heart rate of a population is 90 beats per minute. That's our mu. That's mu right here. And with a standard deviation of 16 beats per minute, and that's our standard deviation, the sigma here. Find the z-scores that correspond to each of the following heart rates and round your answer to the nearest hundredth if necessary. So for 72, that's our x in this example. So I would just take 72 and subtract 90 and divide by the standard deviation of 16 and I get negative 1.125 but rounding to the hundreds I get negative 1.13 and we would expect to be anything that's less than 90. 90 is our center point or our mean so anything less than that should be negative on the negative side of that and anything greater than that should be positive because it's on the right side of that. So to get the z-score for 115, 115 minus 90 divided by 16, and then you just round that to the two places and you get 1.56. So if we were going to say what's more unusual, a heart rate of 72 or a heart rate of 115 in these particular beans, I don't know what they are. Well, 115 is more unusual because it's further away from the mean. It doesn't matter which if it's to the left or the right. We just want to know the absolute value of that, which one is the more unusual. And the further away for, it is from zero, the more unusual that it is, even though both of these are within the usual range because we think of usual going out two standard deviations, but 115 would be the more, more unusual relatively so. Okay. Let's look at an example where we have a safe load for a water taxi is found to be 3,500 3, pounds. The mean weight of a passenger is assumed to be 140 pounds. Assume that all passengers are men and assume the weights of men are normally distributed with a mean of 172 pounds and a standard deviation of 29 pounds. If one man is randomly selected, what is the probability he weighs less than 174 pounds? Okay. We can set this up, but I also just want to say, why would you, why would somebody ever ask this question? Well, look, it says the mean weight of a passenger is assumed to be 140 pounds. So maybe normally on a water taxi, you might have some children that weigh 50 pounds and some women that weigh less and then some men that weigh more, whatever. I uh, don't want to stereotype, but people of all different sizes. But if you put all men on there, statistically you're more likely to get a heavier weight of people and so then you really should be thinking if normally you can put 50 people on there or whatever you have to be careful you don't overload a water taxi so that's important so in this case we just want to know um, our mean is so we have the standard deviation that's no longer 0 and 1 it's 172 is our mean and 29 is our standard deviation. That's what that notation there tells us. So our mean is 172, standard deviation is 29. We're looking at less than because it says he weighs less than. Less than equal to is totally fine here. That's 174 and that's gonna give us that probability. Probability wise, there's like a 53% chance that if you grab one person in this particular group that they're gonna weigh less than 174 pounds. But I want to show you how to do that. This is not a picture from GeoGebra. GeoGebra pictures don't come out that well. They're kind of hard to read. So I usually do them um, elsewhere. But I can show you how to do that. So here's GeoGebra.org, and I'm going to click on the classic. And then I'm going to click on probability. Again, if you don't see probability right away, click on the dot in this triangle up here and then you can find the probability that way. I like it here. And then we have 
don't have zero and it's still normal distribution. It's just not standard because it's not zero and one. So we have 172 for our mean and our, our standard deviation was 29. And we were looking for what's the probability that somebody is less than 174 pounds. And we get that 0 0.575 or 0 0.53. And different calculators may give you something slightly different, but it should be close enough to work for you. All right, so that's how you can use GeoGebra to do that. And I just want to say a few things about z-scores. Z-scores are not areas. Z-scores are distances along that horizontal scale, but areas are regions under the curve. So the red thing is the area, but the, the values down below are the z-scores. Z-scores do not have units, and but they do have a negative and positive to the left or negative and to the right or positive, whereas standard deviation, we don't, we don't give them signs. We just say it's one standard deviation away. It could be left or right. So a z-score now has sign, but it doesn't have units. Um, choose the correct right or left side of the graph by drawing the picture you're working with. And that's so nice when you have the technology that draws it for you. But once you see something like this, you should say, okay, here's the middle. Is my value to the right of that, that's going to be positive, or to the left of that, it's going to be negative. A z-score is negative, that's located on the left of the middle, and right on the positive. Areas can be zero or positive, but they cannot be negative because we don't have a negative space in there. We can only go down to zero. So those are some things about z-scores to know. All right, so now we're looking at another um, example. Use the data from example 10, I don't know what that is, to find what weight separates the lightest 99.5% from the heaviest 0.5%. So, oh, that's just the problem we were just doing. So we still have 172 as a mean and we still have 29. But now we're looking to separate all the way up. You can see the picture here, and it would be a blue picture if you were using GeoGebra. I use different, pic different programs here and there. Um, but anyway, if you if you go in here and do, we want to look at the lightest 95%, so all these, and then we're going to put in 0.995, always move your decimal point over two places, and then do less than, uh, because we want to look at all this to the left here, and that's going to give us this, which means the separation point is 246.70 pounds. That's the person on the boat, the 99.5% uh, of the percentile person is, is 247 pounds. Okay, and then we have something like this where we have now a uh, figure below represents the ages of men who seek care replacement therapy. Mean is 50 and the standard deviation is 10. This is what our distribution looks like here. What's the probability that a man seeking hair replacement therapy is between the ages of 40 and 60? So we have, um, we can do that on uh, GeoGebra. Um, also, we can, I, I will show you how to do that on GeoGebra. Um, let's go back to this one. I like to come into it fresh every time. Sometimes it can be a little glitchy for me. I don't know if that's true for anybody else. But I do know here we have a, a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. And I don't know if this will work for us. Um, we want to know um, what's, what's the probability that it's between 20 and 60, the ages and we get 0.6827. All right, so that's how you can do that on GeoGebra. I didn't use it, use GeoGebra for this picture probably, but I still got the same value when I moved that over 68.27% uh, that the person coming in for hair replacement would be between those two ages. And then the last example is uh, find the area of the shaded re region. Uh, this is IQ scores for adults normally distributed with a mean of 102 and a standard deviation of 15. That's our distribution. And what's the uh, probability or what's the cutoff point here? Uh, what's this area under here if we know the cutoff point is 80? So if the person had an IQ of 80, what's the area? How many, what percentage of people are below 80 or below? And so if you went into GeoGebra, you would click on GeoGebra Classic, then Probability. You would do less than because we're looking at the left side, and then you would say less than 80, and it would give you this area, and then you can round that off to uh, 1 .0 0.112.
Okay, I think that's enough for this video. Have a fantastic day.